Chris map out there. <laughs> it is Daybreak. Now, of course, Daybreak can still provide excellent games as well. And we don't really want to hate on Daybreak, but uh, it feels like Daybreak is holding... I don't know. I don't want to say it no more, Ben. Liquid Xenos are Purple Zerg spawning on the right top side of Daybreak. And Fnatic Raid Call Oz is our Blue Proto spawning in the left bottom side of this map. Yeah, you know, Daybreak, it's, I'm not going to say it's a bad map. It's a fantastic map, of course. But uh, the thing is, the metagame has sort of reached a point where players just have figured it out. And that means we see a lot of very similar situations unfolding time and time again on Daybreak. So You remember the first or Ooh, Xenia wants more, but I'm going for a pretty early pool. Uh, 12 pool this time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one of the harder maps to get away with something like that, certainly when there's a probe scout across this early. I do not think that Oz is going to allow himself to be caught by this. He'll probably go Forge before Nexus. Last Even game he, he is still saving went. a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, last game he still went Nexus first. He might actually make uh, sort of what Grubby likes to do, get n uh, Forge and then Nexus. But it seems like he just wants to go Nexus first, man. He is not afraid. Daybreak, of course, is a very long map. There's a lot of distance between both bases. And he's still going for Nexus first, despite scouting a relatively early pool. Now, we know Xenia has been playing a lot of Heart of the Swarm, so there's really no mm -hmm. telling exactly how up to speed he is with uh, the Wings of Liberty uh, metagame, I guess. Uh, four Lings going into production. Will he make those fifth and sixth Zerglings? It's looking more and more like no. Seen some fantastic games, though, from Xenio in Heart of the Swarm. Uh, certainly one game he played against Lutot on uh, Abyssal. What's the name of the map? The brown one? Echelon Waste? Echelon Waste? Man. Yeah, I, I think it's Echelon Waste. I, think I, right. I don't really remember them by their names. I remember them by Protoss map. <laughs> Protoss looking map. Big that's two base in my main base map. That's Star Nation. Uh, Protoss map is Star Nation. Um, the, pr the, in <laughs> the in base natural is Fractured Glacier. The other ice map, the two plane no, map, no, is no, Howling Peak. Fractured Glacier is like on top. No. The, t the base I'm talking about is like mm -hmm. you've got two bases on top of your. Oh, that's uh, like yeah. on top of a Coral City. Yeah. Coral yeah, yeah, City. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I thought you meant the ice map. And Howling Peep, and then the uh, Howling Peak. And the other one is Eklund Waste. And one game by Xenio uh -oh. versus Todd was an Eklund Waste. What's going on, Ben? Xenio the walks Ooh. right in with four Zerglings. Man, too much out of the swarm talk. Distracted me totally. Forgot about the Lynx, Ben. Lynx will run into straight into the main base. How did that happen? I don't really know. I mean, Oz was in position to finish his wall off, but he just kind of let the Lynx walk past. Maybe he was just a little bit sh short on cash. Uh, already he's lost a probe and his mining has been disrupted pretty substantially. So this is great for Xenio. Invested in the early spawning pool, got the Zerglings into the main base. Well, this is going to be super annoying for Oz. I was completely sort of lost my trade of thoughts there, guys, because I figured that Oz knew what he was doing and did not expect those links to go in. But the links are in right now and they're going to be a real big pain to deal with. Uh, is he going to make a Zealot? Or I mean, I can imagine he's going to make a Zealot. He's going to Chrono boost it out as well. But the biggest problem is the Zealot has the same speed as the Lynx, so it's even a little bit slower. So he's not going to be able to deal with them. And Xenia is going to be able to keep them alive for such a long time, which allows us better to talk about the predictions. Yeah, I think uh, our predictions are pretty uniform today. I, I, I know that I chose Xenio to take this series uh, just because I, well, I, I like his ZVP, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. This probe will fall. Oz gets a good scout off in the main base uh, of Xenio. Uh, did spot the extract as well, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check that for you guys. Well, we see the Zello chasing the links down. Uh, yes, he did see the extractor. He could have clicked, of course, on it. Once you have a scout, you always want to click on the extractor or a simulator or a refinery. He's going to try to trap the links. Will trap three? Oh, that's a very nice move by us. Oh, only gets two, but still. A for effort. Good job by Xenio keeping these two Zerglings alive for as long as possible. They grant him more than the ability to harass. This is just a fantastic scout. He knows, <sighs> hey, that Zealot is chasing my Zerglings. That means it's not walking across the map. He only killed one probe, though, with those four links. Do you think he perhaps should have committed the links a little bit earlier and then only keep one link alive? Because I feel if you have four links in someone's main base, you should be able to take out at least two or three probes. Uh, I don't know, man. I think it's pretty hard, especially with the way these pros micro. It's it's very, oh, very it's difficult so smart. to kill workers. X uh, is denied, man. <laughs> yep. Oz will shut down the last of this Zergling harass and uh, moves on into the mid game with his build pretty much protected and his workers. Yeah, this is just so nice for Zerg already to uh, go into this phase of the game knowing that there is nothing to worry about. Well, I like the answer by Oz as well. Oz realizing that it's going to be hard for him to get really aggressive right now when everything has been so delayed. Why not try to get away with a ridiculously quick turret base? Takes it before the eight minute mark. That is blazing fast. That is wide draw fast. That's for faster such a, than White Ruff. For fast, such an man. old man, Vydra is very fast within a chance. 
Xenia has no idea about this third base yet. Overlord is very nearby, but not in range of that building nexus. Oh, I miss the days White Rod was in the NASL, Ben. It was always so much fun to cast White Rod. I talked to White Rod a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. But casting him is just mm -hmm. different now. Invited him to play a uh, Brood War show match on the NASL stream. And he said, oh, I haven't played Brood War in a long time, but I'll try. I'm very curious. Um, I mean, I'm very intrigued by what we're seeing right now out of Xenia once more, Ben. We see the Hydralisk going down. He scouted the uh, Hydralisk then going down. And now the Spire is going down as well. So he's just getting all the tech. And if Oz ever scouts it, good luck figuring out what he's actually going to make. But I'm not sure if I would be a fan of him making Hydras. He might have a really small window to do something as the Robo Bay is just halfway done. But if Oz drops the Robotics Bay, uh, I should have said Robotics Facility, if he drops the Robo Bay immediately, we all know that a couple of sentries and one Colossus can already be enough to shut down any form of Hydralisk aggression. No, Hydra aggression is not going to work. What might work is, uh, is a big Muta play because of how spread out Oz is going to be and because of the fact that he's investing in Robo and not Twilight. I would have loved to see Oz at least get one more pilot in this little mix and maybe one more cannon because uh, despite this looking very fierce and obviously this cannon is never going to fall against Link, this is not very smart I think, <laughs> powering five gates and a cannon with one pylon. Especially not against Mutas, who can just fly in and snipe that pylon easily. We'll have to wait and see exactly how this plays out. hydrogen has been done for a while, and not a single Hydralisk was produced. So I think we can pretty much bank on the fact that Xenia is going to make some Mutas. Yeah, I kind of wonder, though, why did he make the Hydralisk then? It's not the biggest investment in the world. Oz making a good read here. Or, well, I'm not sure if it's actually a read or not, or rather just a... Uh, a lucky guess, but he's dropping the Twilight Council, and that's of course a start to deal with the Mutas. If he would have gone for Robo Bay immediately and tried to get Colossus out as quick as possible, he would have been in a terrible position against Mutalisk. Now, to answer your question about the Hydras, Kevin, I think Hydra Ling is an okay response to some uh, some sort of immortal timings. And Xenia might have just thrown that down just in case. Like yeah. if he sees Oz move across the map, all right, well, I can make some Hydras and I'll be okay. I think it's spot on, Ben. I think that's exactly the thought process in the real. And the moment he realized that was not going to happen, he immediately switched out of it, dropped the spire, and uh, is going up to as many bases as possible. So I am pretty damn sure that you are right, and that is exactly what was going on in the genius mind of Liquid Xenia. Uh, Mutas do show up to the main base of Oz. He is completely unprepared for this, was not expecting Mutas in the slightest, loses a lot of probes immediately. Ten workers shut down just instantly. Uh, stalkers, of course, are pulled to answer right away, but uh, these mutas are going to have no problem, problem just darting out of there and waiting to find another big opening. Curious to see how many mutas he really is going to make. He does have an observer in the main base, so he can keep an eye on is Zinio going to make that insane amount of mutalisk we see every now and then. We saw it from uh, Hee Han, the player that's doing so good right now in the North American Star League, in his Code A match, and he should have won that game, but he did not actually win it. But actually in the production tab, and we see that Zinio is already transitioning, so uh, he's probably just hoping that Oz is going to spend a lot of money on cannons around his base, and it's going to stay passive for a very long time. While Zinio is just macroing up, going up to four base, and already ready getting, uh, getting ready for that transition point. He wants Oz to invest in cannons, and he wants us to invest in Stalkers. As we can see, he is continuing to commit resources to Zergling upgrades. He's getting his Infestors out. So we're going to see a switch yeah. over into Infestorling. Which is, of course, brilliant against a very Stalker-heavy army. If there's one way to deal with a lot of Blink Stalkers, it has to be well-upgraded Infestorling. So a really smart play so far from Xenio. Really enjoying what we see. And we can't forget that he always has the option to go back to some Hydras. He doesn't have that much creep spread, so it's uh, pretty unlikely yeah. that that's what we're ever going to see. Uh, but Hydraling is another very powerful, explosive army composition that does very well against anything that doesn't include Colossi or High Templar. Where did the vision come from? From the, the, which? Oh, the OC here, I guess. Okay, we see uh, Middle is flying around right now. We don't know if he will be able to pick off this observer. At least he should be able to pick it off. Uh, Blink is ready, though, so he might be able to pick off a Middle East. Nope, that's not going to be the case. I'm not sure if Oz should be aggressive. Uh, yes, he has a lot of force fields against all those links, but the Infestus band, that's what I'm worried about. Uh, immediately, we see a big fungal going down on a large group of those stalkers. There's some pretty good force fields from Oz. Very, very defensive force fields. They're going to make the Zergling attacks. Well, there's still 19 larvae. Xenio really needs to start using that larva, though. Of course, the spine crawlers here are an excellent point to fall back on, and I think Xenio should be more than fine. Lots of fungal being cast. Lings will come in and clean up what units are left over. Uh, Sigma Queen lives. 
Robo Bay going down immediately. Ben, um, also, is going to re also is realizing right now that he won't be able to break that with just the army that he has right now. So he's going to transition into Colossus, which will of course give Xenio the time to transition into those oh so scary brute lords and brute lords. If they're they're always good, but if they're really good on one map, it has to be on Daybreak. Yeah, this is sort of the ultimate brute lord map. We can see the the beginnings of Xenio's end game already shaping up. He's got a spine crawler wall in place. Uh, he's investing all of his Whoa. gas into investors. Really big zealot warping over here in the main base. We do not have uh, a charge slots, and there are a lot of links actually in positions. So Xenia doing a pretty good job dealing with this. Imagine, man, if there would have been, well, I want to say, like one or two Dark Templars in the mix, but Overseer is on patrol over here, I think. Flying across uh, both bases. So overall, Xenia handled that pretty damn well. Yeah, zealots will kill a handful of Zerglings, maybe a drone or two. No, not even a single drone. Uh, but uh, that's all that they're going to get, Kevin. I don't think the mutas are going to allow that war prism to, to be active for much longer. A little small zealot run by over here into the back of the third base will be easily dealt with. Love the one spine crawler. It really helps out a little bit. Another really uh, big warping over here by, uh, by us. A lot of zealots being warped in into the main base. He's trying to position them as well as possible, but Xenio has just an overwhelming amount of links. Uh, we'll be able to deal with it. Oh, cancel! Well, that base does get cancelled. Uh, while that was happening, the Zealots in the main base cleaned up. The Mutas killed the War Prism, so no more harassment options for Oz in the immediate future. I mean, one thing that's going to be nice for Oz, Ben, is, okay, he's not going to have a mod even He did uh, wipe in with Stargate, by the way, guys. Uh, I'm not sure if he has a Fleet Beacon yet or not. I don't believe he has one. The good thing he is uh, at least going to have to deal with all the Brute Links is that he's going to have Storm and Colossus and well-upgraded Link Stalkers. Now, most of the time when Protoss gets in this also unfortunate scenario, Storm is not there. Now, Storm is not absolutely fantastic and a uh, hard counter to Brute Lords, but it does definitely help out. Yeah, uh, certainly it, it, it uh, thins out the Broodlings. It can do some damage to the Brute Lords, believe it or yeah. not, although it, it certainly takes a lot of storms to kill a Brute Lord. Yeah, but every now and then they're clumped up, and of course uh, it, it helps out a ton dealing with the Infestors, as you can feedback them or even just storm as. Infestors only have 90 HP, so every damage you deal to them is pretty massive. Oz's army is getting scary, though, yeah. Kevin. He's at 167 supply. It's 101 army supply. Not much smaller than the army of Xenio. He's pretty well upgraded as well. He has 3-1 on upgrades already. If we take a look at the links of Xenio, we can see that he's still on 1-1. He is working on 2-1, but then he's also working on the Roach upgrades at the same time. So he's not getting any armor anymore. Not sure what the purpose of this little army is. You're going to need some force fields. He's going to drop four suits, but I think he's going to end up losing everything uh, over here. Uh, second second prong to this attack in the bottom half of yeah, the map. I have no idea well what's going on with this uh, Stalker Colossus squad. Neither army looks very intimidating, if I have to be honest. Uh, Zerglings will run by up into the top left-hand corner of the map. There's not many Stalkers back there, and I think well, Lings alone will be able to shut that down. I was going to end up losing at least one more Stalker, two more Stalkers, three more Stalkers. Uh, ends up losing a sentry over here as well. Now, the sentry is not the biggest loss anymore. But he's going to lose a few cannons over here as well. Wow, Oz, that definitely did not work out the way you had it in mind. No, not at all. And of course, while all of this is happening, Xenia is continuing to warp in, not warp in, but uh, to morph in. Oh, God. Wars. Ben, Ben, don't say that. <laughs> Might give David Kim some ideas. Before we know it, we're going to see Zerg warping in Broodlords. Eight Broodlords are on the map right now. 17 Infestors. Not a single Corruptor, though, which is something that Xenia is going to want to be mindful of. Getting plus one on the air weapons as well, so we might eventually see some battle cruisers out of Oz. House of Ops has displayed us many times that battle cruisers can definitely work against Zerg. Why they're also one of those pers uh, people, but it also comes down to how many corruptors does Zerg really make. Uh, there are situations where Zerg gets an incredibly scary army but, and might still be able to deal with the Protoss army. But if Protoss has a storm, has high Templars, has a mother ship, has Blink Stalkers, has Colossus, and battle cru and um, did I say battle cruisers all the time? I, of course, mean carriers. Why did I say battle cruisers, man? I don't know, man. I was just kind of rolling with it. Yeah. You just, you, just made, you, you just let me make a fool of myself. Live on any LTV. I did want to correct you on stream. You? Wow. If there's anyone out there, Ben, who can correct me on stream, it's you. As long as you don't say that even you think I could beat this guy. <laughs> Next is going to fall down in the top left. This is a nice pickoff here for Xenio, especially when you factor in the fact that he's recycling Zerglings and Mutas, basically dead supply. It's uh, oh, a massive pickoff. He's, he's trading these for, for important things, a Nexus, pylons, uh, the, the, the pylons powering those gateways, no less. And this supply is going to be turned into lots and lots of Corruptors. At least that's what it should be turned into. Xenia you know, not producing anything just yet. Eight Broodlords and 15 Infestors. Well, eight Broodlords is a lot, don't get me wrong. 
But if one Vortex lands and you zone out four Brood Lords, your Stalker should be able to clean up the other four really easily, and then you should be able to clean up the rest as well. I think right now, Ben, this army of Xenio, as silly as it sounds, might not actually be strong enough. Wow, look at this Archon, it's being Neuroparasite. Sad little Archon. Oh, will die. Sad dead little Archon. Uh, Fungo's landing. Oh, we're gonna see Vortex, good Fungo Grove right there. Uh, He's gonna try to get a so Neuro! Neuro! He's trying to get a Neuro on the Mothership, I think, but he's not getting it yet. Good fungo so far by Xenio. Still has a lot of energy, still doing it right. Getting a feedback down there from us. Morlings up in the top half of the map may once again try to run around and do some harass, but it's hard to attack through the yeah. middle here. As both these players... One Vortex, man. One Vortex could change everything, yeah. even though we only have two Archons in the mix right now. One Vortex, one big no. Neuro. Oh, no, Vortex lands on a couple of Investors. Yeah, two Investors and Novus here. Uh, these stalkers are going to fall once more. Oh, so leaving a few stalks behind is not going to keep you safe against 50 well-upgraded Zerglings. No, not at all. Those Zerglings will have 3-3 three, three soon. Uh, still not a uh, single Corruptor on the map, Kevin. It's just eight Broodlords, no real anti-air. And, and Oz has the money. I would have loved to see Oz, while he was a 175, 180 supply, get two additional Stargates and start warping, uh, start working on carriers. Yeah, carriers are even, as, I mean, Void Rays are almost yeah. never a good idea, <laughs> but when there's no Corruptors... Yeah, the Infestors are the biggest problem. Infestors have a very hard time dealing with carriers because they have so much HP. Uh, Void Rays on the other end do not have that much HP. Stormlands does quite a bit of damage on these Broodlords. Good Storm right there by us, at least the first one. Second one scares Xenio away. Feedback going down. Ah, I guess one. Single feedback. Eye for an eye. Wow, this is a very nice move actually in this phase of the game, Ben. When the entire Protoss army is over here in the middle, while Xenio is sacrificing a couple of Overseers, we're going to have a massive link drop in the main base, and that's going to be hard to deal with for us. This is awesome now. Oz is maxed out. He can't warp in, Kevin. He's going to lose a lot of his very, very valuable infrastructure. A uh, fantastic move from Xenio, loving it. Broodlords at the same time oh, yeah. do find a fight in the middle of the map. Can we see a Neuro? Yes, we do see oh, a but, Neuro. But there's not enough energy yet. Oh, he's just gonna, oh, this is so risky on either side, Ben. This is so risky on either side. The Infestor should die. Oh, the Oz doesn't have vision. Oz oh, does not have vision. No Observer. Mothership does finally uh, go back oh, to... Oh, Neil Neuro and Vortex get landed. Protoss, uh, wow, oh. man. Uh, neural Parasite, great use of Neural by Xenio here. Oz's supply is really oh. dwindling. And uh, look at the damage that he's taken in his main base from this just massive drop. This was such a great move from Xenio. It was a great fungal, a great Vortex as well. It was so close. And Xenio did that really well, but now the Broodlords are quite exposed. Uh, three out of four Broodlords fall immediately. But as you pointed out, also well, Ben, this drop, there's just absolutely nothing that Oz could have done about this drop. Wow, look at all those Ooh. runs. <laughs> Suicide mission lane's gonna come streaming in. They're gonna die very, very quickly. Now this natural is gonna take a lot of damage as well. There's just a single cannon here, Ben. I think Oz is gonna lose his natural too. So basically he's gonna say, I'm gonna try to win this game with this army, but there are 7,000 minerals in the bank for Xenia. Tons of minerals, 36 larva. He can make whatever the heck he wants. He's just gotta decide on exactly what it's going to be. Um, of course, he will just ransack this entire natural. He's going to kill the cyber cores. He's yeah. going to kill the, the Zeno, Nexus. What do you think he's waiting for, though? Why is he not making units? Now, finally, we see 10 Corruptors going into production. That maybe he was a little bit supply blocked. I think what he wants to do is just make an insane amount of Corruptors, right-click them on the Colossus, and then run in with links as soon as the Colossus are dead. I th yeah, that makes it that, that'll work. <laughs> uh, I mean, he can if he kills the Colossi, he can deal with the Stalkers yeah. in whatever way he wants, man. Uh, roaches, Investors, he can pull Corruptors back and make right. Broodlords. This is going to get more Broodlords, which I guess will work as well as he's forcing Oz to retreat. Oz is going to give more time to Xenio, but uh, yeah, Xenio lost his fourth base. He still has his fifth base, and more importantly, as we mentioned twice by now, he has 7,000 mineral minerals in the bank. Yeah, it was just incredible. He's got money in right the now. bank, uh, all his fans he like to tag. A lot of more, a lot more Broodlords. Just getting, uh, just finishing up morphing. 62 lings, some roaches on the way. I mean, Xenia does not roll with corruptors. He just doesn't really like them. He morphed everything again? Why well, yeah. there's one left. The lonely corruptor. One corruptor to shoot down observers. <laughs> I was going to try to make something happen in the right bottom side of the map. Xenio could defend this if he really wants to, and it seems like he wants to, man. Doesn't want to lose one more base. Lens of Fungo on a couple of Stalkers and Colossus. Every unit counts for all, so you cannot just let these units die. Wow, huge fungals on these Colossi. Those Colossi are not ever going to leave. And the Brute Lords are going to just kill everything. At the same time, there's some Zerglings running around the other side of the map. I don't know what they're doing camped out on the top yeah. left. Complaining Oz when he's not there. <laughs> 
Oscar ends up losing all four Colossus men, and this is the moment where Zeno can basically just make as many links as he wants, and it's going to be so hard for us to deal with. He's wrapping in a lot of Archons over here. Those are going to help out quite a bit against these links, and he will be fine against this little hit squad, but not against the Mama Ship army that's coming in from the mm, south side. The Archons are great against the Lings, not going to be so great against the Brood Lords. You and know what would be uh, awesome, man? Like, once Protoss flies in with like four Y Prisms and drops the Archons right below the Brood Lords. That would be awesome. I agree with you. 18 Infestors in production, by the way. This is only possible on Daybreak. It's insane. Do you oh. ever see that on any other map? Like, the ridiculous amount of Infestors we always see on this map? I mean, we cast it Sen versus Xenio while we see another offensive blink going down over here by Oz. It's a pretty good blink, but I'm afraid it's just not going to matter. Uh, Stalkers continue to blink forward. Here come uh, a lot of reinforcing infestors getting caught by a Zealot and an Archon up just above that, uh, that little choke, Kevin. This Archon has 10 kills. They're all infestors. No. You're lying. I'm not lying. Tell me you're lying. Man. I'm not lying. <laughs> now he has 11 kills. Now he's going to have 12 kills. Because Archon hates Infestors. And Oz is killing so many Broodlords. If Oz wasn't as well, <laughs> more, more Infestors coming in. Uh, more Fungals going down over here on these Stalkers, though. Oz did a really good job. Orzinho did a pretty poor job at positioning his army. The troop is somewhere, somewhere in between. But I also think that Zinio just doesn't care very much because I guess he knows how far ahead he really is. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the truth of the matter. Oz really doesn't have bases, Kevin. He's got one base. He had to completely rebuild all of his infrastructure using whatever bank that he had to do that. I mean, it's uh, Xenia would have to make a incredible series of blunders. Oz killed this so back. many Infestors. It's almost sad to see. If you take a look at the unit's last resource tab, well, Oz did lose quite a bit more than Xenia. Um, I guess because of the fact he lost his entire infrastructure, that was pretty expensive. But I think unit-wise, Oz was being pretty effective. This doesn't matter as Zeno has been heavily outmining him, taking better fights, and Oz just missing the window that he perhaps had a little bit quicker. Yeah, well played game from Zeno. GG finally gets called, and the series is tied up one to one. In this makeup game of division number two, for the people who wonder about their records, both players are currently 2 2. They both have two wins, two losses. So it's a big game for either of them. Uh, to going 3 2, of course, helps out quite a bit. Looks so much better than 2 3. Yeah, it was brought to you guys by Audible. Download and listen to a best seller today. And if you're going to do that, do it via nasl.tv slash p slash audible for a special promotion on those audio books. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with perhaps the best Protoss map in our map pool. Steps of War. Yes. 